Hey, welcome back to my channel, Duct Tape Mechanic. If you're married, you're all too familiar with that scene, which is waiting in your car for your wife to come out. I'm in an attempt to solve that problem. I installed a PA system into my car. I highly doubt that that's gonna solve the issue, but in this video, I'm gonna show you how I installed this. So uh, hopefully it'll be a fun journey. So if you like this video, make sure you subscribe to my channel for more DIY and tinkering videos. So here's this uh, PA slash uh, speaker system I picked up on uh, Amazon for like uh, 18 bucks or so. I just thought it would be a fun little project. Um, it's obviously made in uh, China. And uh, so that's how those are always interesting um, installs. So we'll see how this thing goes. Um, versatile, it says. I mean, <laughs> uh, super loud, apparently. All right, so we'll open this thing up and uh, see what it looks like. The speaker itself is actually, I mean, feels cheap, but uh, it's got some good size to it. It's got the uh, power cables here. I think uh, it says it's designed to be just hooked straight to the battery, but uh, I think I'm going to have to extend these out and uh, hardwire it into the car so uh, it only turns on when the car's on. Or maybe I'll hardwire it to a switch and turn it on that way. Definitely not going to go directly to the battery. So let's just have to extend these out with more wire. So then, uh, just got this cable for the microphone. This is the mic. Really light. Just got the mounting bracket for the mic. And that's pretty much it. Um, it's got a couple of screws to mount the mount the mic bracket, but uh, no hardware for the speaker. So we're gonna have to figure that out ourselves. I'm just gonna bolt it using some uh, nuts here. But uh, it's gonna be a little bit challenging to get this size of the speaker underneath the the hood. So that'll be task number one. We'll see good mounting spot for it. Um, yeah, so let's get this thing started. So this is the engine bay on the, on the car I'll be installing it on. And uh can't really think of a good place to mount this thing. Aside from on or underneath the anti-sway bar. That's what I'm thinking. Because it's got this cavity here, which might be enough room to sit the speaker. So, uh... I was thinking we're going to go that way. I'm just going to have to unbolt a couple of bolts here and uh, take it out that way. Hopefully it comes out a lot easier than the, my 350Z anti-sway bar, which was a pain to get out and put back in. But uh, this looks a little bit more easier. So let's go ahead and get that out. Probably going to get that out and uh, drill some holes into here and uh, mount it that way. First, I removed the anti-sway bar, marked the holes where the speaker would go, and then drilled them out using my drill press. Good. Then I attach the speaker to the anti sway bar using nuts and bolts. Since I plan on hooking the power to the cigarette lighter wires so the speakers only turn on when the car is on, I elongated the power wires to about 10 feet each. I made sure to use heat shrink to seal them. I then used some wire loom to protect the wire. Um, this also gives the wiring a more professional look.
I picked this up for a couple of bucks at Harbor Freight. I then placed the anti-sway bar back onto the mounting studs. I will go back and uh, secure it down at the end. After that, I began feeding the wire into the cabin. In order to do this, I had to take out the pins that hold back the fender liner and enter the cabin through a knockout that uh, most Hondas have for uh, electrical modifications or you know, installing PA systems from Amazon later on. What are you doing? What are you doing? There we go. Built in brakes. Well, say hi to YouTube. Hi, YouTube. <laughs> Since I wanted the wiring to be completely hidden, I had to open the center console to access the wires to the cigarette lighter. With the cigarette lighter unplugged, I did make sure that I was only getting 12 volts when the car is turned on because uh, there are some cigarette lighters that are, provide constant 12 volts. After feeding the wiring into the center console, I used butt connectors to make the connections to the power of the car. Typically, I like to solder these connections because they're really safe but uh, um, as you can tell the space in here is really tight so I use these heat shrink butt connectors and uh, at the end I also use electrical tape and tie that around the wiring as well so I feel like it's fairly secure Then I plugged in all the wires to the center console and uh, reassembled it back together. After the speaker was all wired up, I moved on to the microphone. I found a nice empty spot on the left side cluster and uh, I mounted it using the bracket provided. I did make a hole behind the bracket to hide the wire connection. After that, I bolted down the anti-sway bar and added some zip ties to tidy up the wiring. And uh, we were all done. Alright, so that's what the final product looks like. All the wires are nice and neat and tucked away. Um, power is being drawn from this outlet here. The cigarette lighter. And that itself is fused or it has a fuse so I didn't add a fuse to the I didn't feel like it was necessary to add a fuse to the power line for the speaker so it's essentially the same thing as plugging it into this um, power outlet just a little bit neater you can see you can't really see any of the wires down here uh, they're tucked away behind this panel nice and neat and carefully Underneath here, 
see that wire. That's the power wire. If you come out to the front over here, see all it's nice and zip tied up, and uh, looks okay. All right, so let's test this thing out. So I think I may have mentioned this earlier, but um, it's not just a PA system. It also makes uh, different sounds, like a, a horn sound, a police siren, and uh, different wailing sounds. So we'll test those out. Um, that's the horn. Siren. Now we'll test the mic. Test, testing, testing, testing. Subscribe. Seems to be working. Okay. 